I want you to look at the situation for problem 13 and 14. And actually, this will be an opportunity for me to demonstrate something cool I found last semester. So you know, this is describing um, um, spring is compressed some distance by a stone of mass. And I said stone is now pushed down on additional 30 centimeters and released. And as I keep telling you guys, it's important for you to have a mental image of what's going to happen. Because it asks you, what is the maximum height of the stone measured from the release point? And if you don't have the correct mental picture, there are many ways you can go wrong in trying to answer this question. Um, in fact, something might go wrong even trying to answer part, B, part A, what is the spring constant? So I feel it's really important for you to have mental image. One difficulty is that, um, which is, you know, I went through that little justification a while ago. All the springs I have, they don't compress. They only stretch. And um, for this particular question, I can't set this up and say that this is equivalent. It actually won't work out. So what I do have is a simulation. Oh, wait, I kind of closed it. It's somewhere here, OK. What I do have is a simulation. That I, it's a two-dimensional simulation, so it's kind of limited. But you know, it's a, limited in an actually good way. So you know, I have a sphere, and I run the simulation. It sort of does that. And because it's a simulation, I can do different things. Uh, let's see. Let me move this back here. Um, I can give it different properties. So you know, you so it, it stopped bouncing back up and down. This is the thing that determines if it's going to be elastic or not. So when I do that, um, it now bounces a little bit more, but not as much more as I was hoping it would. Um, it's probably because this surface is um, not bouncy. So you know, make this there, then now it should be bouncing around longer. All right, yeah. <laughs> Elastic collision. Um, so the nice thing about simulation is that as long as you are convinced that it's fairly realistic, that it lets you to lets you set up stuff that you don't have a physical things to set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the exact situation that this is describing in the simulation. I was playing with it, and I think it'll actually work out. So what I'm going to do is oh I don't know how to erase stuff. OK. Um, so I need to set up some walls. Because when I was uh, playing with this earlier, um, oh wait. Uh, when I was playing with this earlier, if I just try to support a platform with a spring, then um, platform kind of falls over like anything would. So these walls are there um, to support uh, the um, thing that's going to be on the spring. Let me put a little bit of a, a fixed point so that these things don't fall. And because, so it has a tool for spring. But because the spring needs to attach to something, I am going to make a little platform here. Yep. And let me um, attach springs. And I kind of need to attach two springs symmetrically so that um, the thing doesn't rotate. Yep. Kind of you know, how you would build something physically if you are actually building it. And uh, let me let it run the simulation. And all right, yeah, it leans over, and then it rests. And if I pull this down a little bit, and then let it move up and down, then it kind of comes to a stop, which is not really what I want. I want energy to be conserved. So I need to go into the, uh, the descriptions for these and make sure I'm going to set up properties that will conserve energy. You know, No friction. Same thing here. Material, no friction. Um, now, when I try it out again, it still loses energy. All right, something else must be going on. Um, no friction. Wait, do I want no friction? I think I actually, um, so the bigger thing I think is actually the spring property. Yeah, it has a little bit of damping built in. So let me get rid of the damping. Um, now this is going to be set up so that if I pull it down a little bit and then let go, then it'll bounce around practically forever. Okay. All right. Uh, actually, let me <laughs> reintroduce the damping to get rid of that. Uh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Fairly realistic, right? 
Yeah, so that's the main thing I want you to make sure you guys are okay with. Um, so now I'm going to set up the situation that was exactly described in the, um, in the problem. And I'm hoping, you know, seeing it done will help you build a mental image of this. So let me make an object. So this is a mass of some whatever kilograms that I'm going to take. Um, this is the thing I can grab, disable rotation, so I can take this, grab it, lift it up, and oh wait, I made it too big. All right. Um, I don't know. I'm not used. That's this is one of the downsides with um, simulation. You kind of had to have practice in it, and uh, I found this last semester, and I don't use it as often as I should. So all right. So uh, let me pause the simulation before I do this. So okay, simulation is paused. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, let me move this here, and very gently place it here. All right. When I let the simulation run again, what do you think will happen? Will this just stay here and just be at rest? Or will something different now happen? Okay, how different? Well, let's see then see. Um, all right, let me run the simulation. All right, is that sort of what you expected? That the spring will get compressed down? People didn't expect that it'll get compressed down. Yeah. You should have expected that it'll compress down. Uh, maybe you know this tilting to side. You wouldn't have expected that. That's just a function of it. All right, there. <laughs> um, um, so, so why would a spring compress down? Yeah, wait. Um, there's a weight of the block, so that has to get balanced out. So uh, let's actually go back to the situation that it was before. Um, so pause the simulation again. Uh, let me gingerly balance it here, I hope. Oh, never mind. Um, let's spring damping. Oh, wait, it doesn't have any damping. Uh, let me just put the damping in, and when we actually do the simulation, we'll just uh, not, not let it go through many cycles. So let me draw some uh, reference points here. So this is the, I guess I can call this the initial equilibrium position. And when I place this mass up here, um, let me move it up here, and very gingerly place it here. Then it compresses down the spring, and it eventually settles down on some new equilibrium position. So this is a, a new equilibrium position. Okay. Um, and in fact, when you look at the question, the question gives you that information. It says spring is compressed by this distance here. So uh, that's what you are looking at here, that this distance here in the question is 10 centimeters. It's somehow given to you. How do you think that the distance relates to anything else in the problem? Like, so, okay, so let me not get rid of the numbers. So yeah, let's say you have some change in the distance length of the spring. What other quantities does the change in the length of spring relate to? So it can relate to work. You might be remembering the formula for potential energy of a spring equal to 1 half k delta x squared. That's possible. That's what you're remembering. Um, here, if you think about it a little bit, you will realize that, well, that doesn't really help. Because the exact situation here that you're looking at, it's not a situation where energy is conserved. As in, you know, when I lift it up here, and if the energy is perfectly conserved, then this is what happens. Let me set up a situation where energy is perfectly conserved. Spring is, you know, has a zero damping. Once again, this is what I do love about simulation. Spring has zero damping. And when I place it here gingerly and let go, well, it's not really going to come to a stop. It'll just keep moving up and down. Um, it'll eventually come to slow, slow down, but that's because the friction with the side of the wall. Um, so, when we say that this mass will come to a rest at the new equilibrium, we are implicitly assuming that energy is not conserved. 
from um, this equilibrium position to that. That the mechanical energy is lost to something. Here, you know, to make it come to a stop, I have to say, all right, spring, you're going to have some damping so that um, it doesn't oscillate forever. If we set up a situation where it oscillates forever, well, then, um, then you know, it doesn't come to rest at equilibrium. So, you know, this is, this is why it's important for you to visualize. When you simply read the question, it's really easy for you to miss that when it says, you know, spring is compressed to this distance, it's really easy for you to miss the fact that this process involved the loss of energy, loss of mechanical energy. But when you visualize it, um, as in, you know, when you place this mass here, up here, it has some amount of energy, and when you let go, and it eventually comes to rest at the new equilibrium, that had to involve some loss of mechanical energy. So, all right, so good guess, but um, this one work, doesn't work this time. I, mean, I need a, another guess. How does this displacement relate to some other physical quantity? Force. Yeah, force. So, so that's, um, I mean, you know, with a spring, you know two things. <laughs> you know the potential energy and you know the spring force. So if it's not one, it's gonna be the other thing. So uh, spring force was given by Hooke's law, uh, minus K delta X, right? So here, um, I'm hoping that this uh, distance that's given here, this quantity, that's going to be useful in this equation and help me figure out something. I don't know what it is yet, but hopefully something there. And as you look at this, um, the expression for spring force, what don't you know here? As in, you know, look at the information that's given in the problem. What, um, which of these three quantities do you not really immediately know? Okay, so you might say force and constant. Oh, in fact, part A is asking for the spring constant, which means you need to f somehow find out the force. Do you have something that's given here that'll let you find the spring force at the new equilibrium? Gravity, right? Uh, Maggie, you, you're saying gravity, right? Yeah, so we are given the mass here, which means we can say, oh, the spring force at equilibrium, uh, this absolute value of this, it's gonna be equal to mg. Right? And you know, if you want, you can draw a free body diagram, go through a whole standard strategy, but this is not a complicated question, so it's better if you go through that quickly. So yeah, so that's really what the information that's given in the problem is saying. The mass that's given, that's telling you what the spring force will be at the new equilibrium position, and you, it's your given delta x, which means you have enough information to figure out spring constant k. So that's uh, the process you are supposed to go through and say spring constant K is equal to mg divided by delta x. And everything on the right hand side is something that you have numerical value to plug in from the question. Okay. All right, so, so from this point on, what you can do is you can treat K as a, uh, as a known quantity. As in, if you need a number for K, you can just calculate it. Yep. Okay, so this is the easy part of the question. The, it's the second part of the question that I really wanted a simulation for. It says that the stone is now pushed down on additional amount of distance. I guess three times the distance that it was initially pressed down and then released. So I want you guys to have uh, some physical intuition to be able to visualize what's going to happen. So let me get this far. Uh, let me pr uh, so simulation is still running. Let me use this finger to apply force. Press it down, additional uh, 30 centimeters. So this is about additional 30 centimeters, right? And after getting your answer, I'm going to let go. What do you expect will happen when I let go? It'll get pushed upward, right? Uh, continue to describe motion for me. So, uh, so when I let go, this will get pushed upward, and eventually it's going to get pushed past the equilibrium position. What do you expect to see past that? Will it continue to go up? Okay. Um, what do you imagine happening as the mass continues to go up? Hmm? 
it's going to break contact. Message is going to get launched away from the thing. So let me actually do that and see. So press it down by about 30 centimeters, something like this, close. Oh, I should have slowed down the simulation. Uh, let me let go. OK. Uh, all right. Let me <laughs> slow down the simulation. Um, and OK. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I need to. I made it so that it doesn't rotate when I'm grabbing it, so I need to let it come to a stop first. All right. All right. So it's a you know quarter times the speed that it normally moves. So let me do it again so that this time I can actually um, catch it in time. So it's about 30 centimeters down, and when I let go, it gets launched up. It breaks contact, and about reaches that height. Okay. So that's the maximum height that the question is talking about. So that's the mental image I want you to have. So this is what I mean, visualize. So right now here, I'm using this fancy software to um, do all the hard work of visualization. If this question is on an exam, you won't have access to the simulation. What you need to be able to do is, you have to be able to visualize this process in your head. And that's one of the most valuable tools to have in solving questions like this. But now that we know what happens here, uh, now we just want to answer the question. You know, So we've seen what happens here. And what happens past this point doesn't really matter anymore. Um, I mean, you know, it's going to come back down. It's going to you know, hit the ground. And, but that's not what the question is asking. The only portion of the motion that, um, that I really need to be worried about, the only portion of the motion that I want to work out is, oops. I don't know. These slow simulations are kind of annoying. Maybe half speed. OK. So the only portion of the motion that I need to worry about is, all right, so all the initial condition is set as described. So this spring, it's going to get pushed down a total of 40 centimeters and then released. So at some point, they break contact. And something like this would be the final condition, final state. Or the, this is, so snapshot one is the initial. This is my snapshot too. Yeah. So let's. Uh, um, I have a feeling that we can answer this question using conservation law only. So let's see if we can do it. So uh, conservation of energy. Oh wait. So this is uh, worksheet seven, problem thirteen. So we already answered the part A, and we got the answer of K is equal to mg over delta x as given in the question. So the situation I'm looking for right now is for part B, where um, the, uh, the problem describes two pictures. So the initial picture of the spring compressed by some amount. And let me just draw all the necessary figures here. Say that this was x equilibrium or you know, x equals 0. And um, this is the position for x at initial point. And if I want numbers, I can describe this as, uh, I guess, 4 times delta x. Makes sense that this is the correct value according to what's given in the problem, where delta x is equal to uh, 30 centimeters. Sorry, not 30 centimeters, 10 centimeters that the position that I'm starting the block from is 40 centimeters below the equilibrium position of the spring. Okay? So that's the position. And this is, so this is my snapshot number one. This is my snapshot number one. And the snapshot number two is what you see over there. So let me draw it with the mass way up here. So snapshot number two in red, it'll be um, the mass is now up here. So it's going to be at some height. And it says measured from the release point. All right. So I guess I'm actually measuring it from this point here. So what is this height? When the uh, mass is at the maximum height. Good. So this is my snapshot number two. Now, everyone convinced that energy is conserved here? Yes? OK. Uh, let me get some preliminary questions out of the way. 
because once again, because this is one of the exceptions to the situation that I was describing a while ago. So this is the question I want to address and get out of the way. Is so when I describe the potential energy of this mass and on the spring, can I combine the gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy and say that when I pull this bar down by additional delta three, uh, when I you know when I pull this down by additional three delta x distance, that I can say potential energy at this point, which is the quote unquote spring, say that that's equal to one half k three delta x squared. Can I say that? Now you might think so. But the reason this particular case is an exception is because of how it moves. Let me show you the situation where it would, um, th that I could do the same thing. So the situation where I could do the same thing as what I proved a while back is if I didn't push this down too far, if I push this down just by a little bit, so that throughout it's a, uh, let me let it you know, move uh, at a reasonable speed. And uh, let's say no damping anymore. Um, because that's kind of what I want right now. No more damping. Um, so if I'm describing a motion where this is moving ever so, oops, uh, where this is moving ever so slightly um, around the equilibrium point, so that this remains in contact with the spring the whole time, I would say yes, go with this description. That's what I proved last time. No reason not to use the simplification. But which aspect of this uh, other motion that you are actually seeing for this problem leads you to say, oh, I can't use what I proved last time, that that's not the correct way to describe this this time. Like, what do you see and say, oh, I can't do what I proved last time? Like, what do you see? Anybody? Arjun? Yeah, context. So when I was using this description earlier, it really was important that the gravitational force and the spring force were uh, you know, tied together, that this was attached to the spring and it never came off. If it's going to come off, if the gravitational potential energy will at some point uncouple from the spring potential energy, then that's when I have to deal with the pure gravitational potential energy and pure spring potential energy. So if you ever see that situation happening, you know, when you visualize that at some point in this motion, so you know, so at this down here, down here, sure, I can use the what I proved before. But there's a, some point in the motion where it's going to come off. Oops. Uh, ah, I can't stop it in time. All right. There's a, some point in the motion where it's going to come off, and that's actually the exact snapshot that I want to describe. And for this snapshot, this description will no longer be valid. So I need to recognize that from the beginning and do my description of energy based on separate gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy. Good. Okay, so these are all the difficult hurdles in this problem. Once you get through that, so once you have a correct conceptual picture of what's happening, then setting up the equation and actually solving this is not hard. So let me set it up as an example. So um, we are going to use conservation law strategy, right? We are in agreement on that, okay? So we are saying conservation law. And I'm going to do the same thing that we did the last time. So it, we are looking at conservation of energy. So we are saying the total energy at point one, total energy at point one is equal to the total energy at point two. And let me just be careful here and write out everything. Um, some of the things are gonna go to, go to zero, but let me write it out. When I talk about total energy at point one, so, so I'm talking about potential energy and kinetic energy, but what I need to be careful here this time is the potential energy, it's gonna be gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy plus kinetic energy. So I'm going to be dealing with the three terms for snapshot one, it will be gravitational potential energy at point one plus the spring potential energy at point one again plus the kinetic energy 
at point one. Good. Okay, uh, we are saying that's equal to my energy in snapshot two. Let me write them all out also. Potential energy of you know gravitational potential energy at point one plus um, spring potential energy at point one plus the kinetic <laughs> two. Yeah, thank you. Uh, kinetic energy at point two. I don't know. I color. Co anyways, good. <laughs> um, some of these things are gonna go to zero. Can someone tell me well, which of these quantities go to zero? Yeah, so when you are releasing it, you are releasing it from rest. No kinetic energy. Anything else? What about kinetic energy here? Also zero, right? At the maximum height, that's where velocity is zero. Like even if I didn't pause the simulation, briefly it'll be at zero speed. So kinetic energy here is zero also. All right, um, initial gravitational potential energy. Zero, not zero? Now, so it's a matter of where you are setting your reference point. Because the question asked about the height from the release point, I'm going to say this is my reference point. Yeah, then it's zero. All right, good. So zero, zero, zero. Initial spring energy, uh, spring potential energy, okay, that's not zero. I'm gonna have to write this down. Uh, let's uh, go through if anything is zero here. Uh, final gravitational potential energy, probably not zero. What about spring potential energy? Zero? Yeah, if you say, think it's zero, you have a good intuition. If not, let me show you this simulation again. So, I want you to watch the spring carefully. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> all right, all right, it didn't slide out too far. Okay, uh, yeah, that's one of the problems with the simulation. It doesn't have a natural boundaries. Okay, um, all right. Um, so, you, so this is the position where spring has zero potential energy. Even when it's pressed down here at the new equilibrium, it actually has some spring potential energy. So now, you know, when I push it down here, it has a lot of spring potential energy. And when I let go, I want you to kind of watch it. Okay. Uh, okay, the position where it has a maximum um, potential energy here. How much kinet, um, potential energy does it look like the spring has? Not a lot, right? Let me actually change some of the parameters in the simulation to help you see that better. So uh, part of the reason this part has a little bit of energy left is because the thing has a little bit of mass. Let me turn density of this to zero so that it's a massless platform. So, um, oops. Yeah, that's a little bit un disconcerting. Uh, let me see if this is still massless. Um, I don't know. All right, so it has a mass right now. How do I do this in a way it's not, um, Okay, um, I, I, yeah, this is, okay, let me, uh, let it come to stop first, and then I'll stop it when it's uh, at a standstill. <laughs> Wait, did I get rid of damping? Yeah. <sighs> That's why. All right, all right. We'll wrap this up soon. Okay, all right. Um, All right, slower simulation speed. Um, okay, so let me get rid of the mass of this uh, uh, platform. Oops. Okay, I hope I'm touching the right thing. Okay, get rid of the mass of the platform. <laughs> okay, okay, I think the simulation just has trouble dealing with the zero. So let me reduce the mass, but not quite go to zero. Yeah, um, zero is a, oh, 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 it's already at the limit, okay. So maybe something like this. It, uh, it, it's much, much lighter. And, okay, I think it's maybe a little bit too light. Wait, that's not the thing I, uh, okay, so let me say the material, the density is a tenth of water. 
that's still a lot lighter than where it started out from, but not quite zero, because it's the zero that's uh, causing issues. Okay, so let me push this down. So down. I don't know why to doing that. Um, Okay, I think, okay, I don't want to waste too much time here. So let me just leave it here. Um, that's gonna be enough of a demonstration. So when I release this mess from here, um, I'll try to stop it when this mess is, uh, just the moment when it's released. So the moment it gets released. So this is the approximate position where the platform is, right? And look at the motion of the platform. It only moves a little bit around the equilibrium position. So what that means is in this interaction, almost all of the initial energy has been transferred to the energy of this mass. So within the idealization, where the platform has zero mass, in fact, all of the initial energy is going to go to that mass block there. So, so that's where, um, if you have that intuition, you can say this is spring potential energy is going to be zero. Yeah, once again, this is why I keep saying the visualization is important here. All right, um, so let me wrap this up and I'll go to break. It's already been a long time. So now that you haven't set this up, the equation becomes really simple. I like to go through this step because, you know, everything I we say it's zero, I want to justify it. So now I can say spring potential energy, well, um, when it's at this position, it's uh, this displacement that I have to use displacement from the original equilibrium, not the new equilibrium. So the spring potential energy will be 1 half k times 4 delta x squared. That's equal to the final gravitational potential energy, the maximum height. Uh, mg maximum height of the, uh, of the mass. Then this is something, all these are some things that you have numerical values for. So you can solve for maximum height of the mass. So maximum height of the mass is equal to um, this thing, k4 delta x squared over 2 mg. And you can simplify this a little bit. If you plug in what k is, you know, mg over delta x, but it doesn't really simplify all that much. So mg is cancel out, but this delta x will still be there. So, right. so um, so you know, that's the solution here. Well, so this is what I want to emphasize, that once you know what you're doing, it's really simple. But if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't have the intuition for being able to say this is zero, then it can get complicated. This is where I want you to practice uh, building your imagination early on, so that you can visualize what's going to happen and help you, you know, simplify the problem.